will partake in the message of today or tomorrow. The Lord of heaven will make everyone righteous. We make everyone righteous. Even from the alpha location. No worker. No one that will live the life that will hinder ministry. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. That the Lord will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amos 5 verse 22 to 24 emphasize. That let righteousness run down like stream. We want to pray that today the Lord will increase his righteousness in our life. Open your mouth and pray that, Lord, I'm not satisfied. If there is anything that is still remaining that needed to be taken away, today is the day. So that as the meeting will come to an end, our ministry will never remain the same. The Lord can do it for you. Pray. Begin to pray and say, God, it is righteousness. The righteousness of God. That is what I need. And that is the foundation our Father in the Lord revealed to us from the first day. There are experiences that we cannot overlook. We need that portion. Sanctification experience. And they are there on your notes. Why not pray on God? This is another day. And the Lord is going to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. We are told that Daniel chapter 6 verse 3 emphasized that Daniel was having an excellent spirit. And because of that, you can see his exaltation in the land of Babylon. I want to pray, oh Lord, you will walk on my spirit today. Any filthiness, anything that will make my spirit not to be accepted in ministry. Lord, you will cleanse and purge. You will purge and remove every filthiness of the flesh. The Lord will purge. And it will perfect his holiness even in our life so that we can be able to come up in ministry. Begin to pray and tell him, God, this is what I need today. This is what I need today. And God of heaven is going to do it. Pray. Walk in my life, oh God. That my ministry will never remain the same. I cannot come to a program like this and at the end, I still remain at the same level. Tell the Lord, it cannot be. It cannot be. Whatsoever in my life that will hinder the blessing of God for you, raising me up above the level where I have been before I came in, into this place, that the Lord of heaven do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Deuteronomy 4, 7 says, For what a nation is there so great who had God so near unto them. So we want to pray. If a minister have the God of heaven so close, how great that minister will be. So I'm going to pray, Lord, draw me nearer. We have been far away from you. Draw me nearer. So that your ministry in my life will have a real divine result. Open your mouth, begin to pray. Say, God, today is my day. Lord, I am far away from you. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. And the Lord of heaven will draw you nearer. He's going to do it for us. Wherever we are now, praying, tell the Lord, draw me nearer. In any part of the world, the Lord is about to do something today again. Tell him, and he's going to do it. Tell him and he's going to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. In verse 8, you see, and what nation is there so great that has status and judgment so righteous as all his law which have said before this day? We want to pray when you have the word of God, it makes that ministry to be great. We want to pray that in my ministry I will not lack the word of God. Open your mouth and pray. That in my ministry, I will not lack the word of God. Lord, if I'm going to be great, the word of God is important in ministry. Not story. The word of God is important. What a nation is so great. That have that word. That has that word. The word of God. The word of God. And we have come to hear the word. And we have come to get more from the almighty God. Tell him. And the Lord of heaven is going to do it. He's going to do it for you. He's going to do it for me. Is going to do it. The word of God is an asset. 
in a minister's life. In a minister's life. In Jesus' name we pray. In Psalm 25, verse 9b, he said, The meek will he teach his way. I want to pray, Lord, I humbly bow before you. Today, that I will not say I've known it before, I have known it all. Everyone upon no matter the level, say, God, I'm ready to hear from you today. Open your mouth and pray. It is only the meek, not the one that will say, I've gone to this place, I've gone there, I've gone to Bible school, and they have taught me everything. It is the meek, Lord, there will be no sign of pride. Today I bow. I want to hear from you. I need a touch in my life and ministry. I want something to happen in my life. That as I go back everywhere, Lord of heaven, the fire of revival that I'm getting from here, Lord of heaven, it will spread. And the Lord is ready to do it. The Lord is ready to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, Paul, uh, John was called, come up here. We want to pray that today, oh Lord, you will take me up higher. You will take me up higher. But my ministry will go higher. Tell him, Lord, today take me higher. Take me higher. Take me higher. Take me higher. Yes, take me up higher. Take me up higher. Look at John and see all that he has achieved. He was at the bosom of the Lord. And he has seen even Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Look at Revelation, the gift of the Spirit. But there was a call, come up higher. You have not arrived, I have not arrived. Lord, today take me up higher. And he will do it, he will do it. He will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to pray for Jesus that today the Lord will anoint him. More power will come upon his life and the fire will burn and it will get to you and I and all that we needed to know, the Lord will give to us. So we pray, Lord, anoint your servant. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray that the anointing of God will be so much in his life and God of heaven is going to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to pray, oh God, I will not be like the 50 prophet. That I couldn't get what they ought to get. And only Elisha got it. My coming here, oh Lord, today I will not go empty-handed. Tell him, Lord, I will get something from heaven. I will get something from heaven today. I cannot be like the 50 prophet. And Elisha in their presence got something. And they themselves could not get that thing. Even from the Elisha, Elijah before he went to heaven. How can we come in contact with a man of God like this. And we go back our ministry to remain where it has been. Tell the Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. And so our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We are ready this day to receive the blessing from above. Lord, use your servant to touch our life and that our ministry will change to your own glory. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. For in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you happy this morning? God is going to come down in his fullness and power. And you are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. This morning we are going to stand up on our feet. As we worship the name of the Lord. As we call down the parents of the Lord in worship. It shall be well with us in Jesus' name. I am thine, O oh Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me, but I long to rise in the hands of flesh, and be closer drawn to Draw me nearer, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. 
I forget get money. We are welcome to this meeting in Jesus' name. All our current dignitaries who are here, as well as PFM, we welcome every one of you in Jesus' name. We are welcome. Praise the Lord. Let's open to our congregational song. Go labor on, spend and be spent. Thy joy to do the Father's will. It is the way of the, man, the master went. Should not the servant tread it still? Go labor on. It's not for naught. Thy earthly loss is heavenly gain. May he thee, love thee, praise thee not. The master praises what are men. Men die in darkness at all side, without a hope to chair the tomb. Take up the torch and wave it wide. 
The touch that lies times tickets gloom. Toil on, and in thy toil rejoice. For toil comes rest. For as thy hope, soon shalt thou hear the bridegroom's voice. The midnight spill, behold, I come. We call on Kang Choir to sing for us. To God. Somebody put your hands and shout hallelujah. If you are happy, shout hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God, this morning, the can choir will have a song to bless your soul with this morning. And it's titled, Salvation, Hallelujah, Salvation, Glory and Honor. Amen. Amen. Bless us, blessing.
salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Honor and power unto the Lord and For the Lord.
Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. We thank the Lord very much who has made it possible for us to see this new day. And we are all gathered together here for the ministers, church workers, professional conference. It started on Friday last week, 28th of October. And by the grace of God, we have today, this morning, and it will end tomorrow. I want to plead with all pastors here, church workers and professionals, we have quite a lot of people who are supposed to be in this conference who didn't come on Friday, and today, a good number of them are not here. Please, let's endeavor to reach them, those we know personally, and invite them to this conference. This is a rare opportunity the Lord has given to us here in the state. We don't have it like this every month and every year. God has made it possible for his servant to be here this time. And the Lord has prepared him to be a blessing to us. Please, let's do our best. And I also want to plead with us that as the man of God comes up here, let's maintain quietness and orderliness. Those who are supposed to be seated, please be on your seat. Apart from the ushers that are helping us to ensure things are properly done, the rest of us, please, let's be seated and listen attentively to everything God is bringing to us through his servant this morning. I also know that there are quite a good number of persons here that we are supposed to introduce and recognize. I want to plead with you because of your know, time factor will not be able to do that. If you don't mind, those of you that were supposed to recognize, can you all stand up and we just greet you? Can you please do that? The CAN officials, PFN officials, other men and women of God, the Lord bless you. Thank you very much for being in this conference today. God will do you good. As we all listen to the servant of God, bringing the message from heaven to us for our comfort, for our edification, and for our individual benefits in ministry without much wasting of time. I want to invite the chairman of Khan. A dosage chapter in the person of Apostle General I.U. Omoike to come and introduce the convener and bring him to the podium. Apostle, please. Thank you very much. Peace of the Lord to all viewers around the world, um, all who are hearing my voice here this morning, in this arena and wherever you are sitting, I greet everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give glory to God, our Father Almighty, for this fourth day of this impactful global crusade and for the minister's conference this morning. To minister to us this morning again, it is my singular honor and privilege to invite to the podium this morning the convener of the Global Crusade with Kumuyi, <laughs> the general superintendent of Deeper Life Christian Ministry, the Minister 
to the ministers, the messenger who is bearing, proclaiming the, what the Bible is saying to the ministers. It is my pleasure to invite Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuye. Thank you. Let's welcome also, you very much. Thank you. God thank bless. You. Good morning, everyone. How am I today? Are you as good as me? The Lord put goodness in every life in Jesus' name. Now, we come understand this is Ministers Professionals Conference. Let me pick on the, you know, the professionals, the doctors. If doctors came together all alone by themselves and a speaker is to speak to them, the speaker will not be entertaining them. The minute they, they meet you together, or professionals will not be for entertainment. It will not be for motivation. They'll delve into their practice and they will see what the standard is and where the standard is falling and they'll raise up the standard. If engineers met together, if teachers met together, they'll not be there for the speaker to motivate them and then make them jump and dance and all that. They'll be sober. They will be looking at what it is it in a profession we need to address. And as we come together as ministers, as workers in the church of the living God, we're not going to entertain you. Is that all right with you? And then we're not going to motivate you, motivate somebody. And then he's energized to go and do what he had been doing, which wasn't bearing fruit. Motivation in a meeting like this is not the thing we're going to do. We're going to get to the watch of God. I believe you have your Bible. And we're going to read the Bible together. You'll see it yourself. Where are we? Where should we be? And what's the power that will lead us to where we ought to be? And the Lord will edify every life today in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand as we pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we're here gathered for you. We're not here for, to entertain ourselves, to congratulate ourselves. What great things we have done. We have not done anything great. You are the great God and the mighty God and the wonderful God. Lord, we pray you will throw the such light of your word into every heart and every life today. And you lift us up to be at the level we ought to be for your glory and for the goodness of God and for the expansion of the church. In Jesus' name, lift off your people, empower your people, engage us, Lord, in profitable service in the kingdom of God. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the professionals and the ministers of God say, God bless you. You can see that we're coming to uh, this session. I'm talking to you today on the crucial essentials of an excellent ministry. A ministry, the ministry of the preacher, the pastor, the ministry of the ministers of God. And to make it excellent. And then to know what are the essentials there, what are the crucial things there that I need to take on board that I will know this is essential. This is something I cannot do without. I'm coming to Hebrews chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, will serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God, instructed of God, exhorted by God. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for sea. Moses, says he, says the Lord, that thou make all things, how many things? According 
to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Moses was instructed by God himself. I'll show you the pattern on the mount, the mount of transfiguration. I brought you up all those 40 days and saw no other person, only God. And God showed him 40 days and said, this is the pattern I want. This is the pattern I want. This is the pattern I want in building the tabernacle. And when the end of the 40 days came, the Lord said, See, Moses, everything I've shown you, that you make all things according to the pattern shown to thee on the mount. Uh, don't we have preachers, pastors, evangelists, ministers, that don't even walk by any pattern. What idea comes from their head, from their mind. They just go out and do whatever. Don't we have people in the ministry of the church? Don't we have singers in the ministry of the church? Don't we have workers in the ministry of the church? They don't go by any pattern. They don't go by any standard. Whatever of course to them, whatever mood they have that morning, if they are happy, if they are sad, whatever may be the emotion of the moment, that's how they work. We need a pattern. God said, see, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 is not talking about Christ. We're talking about Moses, but now Christ has come to show us. He got a pattern from heaven. He got a model from heaven. But now I see obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. And now he's handed over the ministry to us. He's gone and he has said, I have all power in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach them all things whatsoever I commanded you. It's giving us a pattern. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 11. It says, and he gives some apostles, not everybody. You see, because we are not following pattern, something happens in our ministry, in our church, and the apostle there is uh, not leaving the seat for us. And we feel I should be an apostle, and then we break off so that he is now a founder, he is a general overseer, he is an apostle. No, he the God of heaven, he, the head of the church, he gave some, not all, gave some apostles and some prophets. And some people like the ministry of the prophet. They like to point, they like to control our lives. And they like to say, look at me here, I'm a prophet. And I tell you, this is what to do, this is what to do. And some people accept that. For somebody to rule, control their lives by prophecy. Speak to my life. Why don't you go to the watch and the Lord will speak to your life. He gave some, not everybody, prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. But why? Look at verse 12. In verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, God, in his own economy, he gave those people the gifts for a reason, for the perfecting of the saints. But hold on. How will an imperfect apostle, imperfect prophet, imperfect evangelist, imperfect pastor, imperfect teacher, perfect the saints. His life is like turned upside down. His marriage, his family, is shattered, scattered. There's no control. And the children are here and there. And that life, what they say, just listen to him. He's apostle. Don't look at his life. Don't look at his, you know, behavior. 
Don't look at his dealing with money, my friend. How will somebody who is sinful get sin and saved? Somebody will say, backslider, did you hear that the prodigal son preached in the far country? When well, you're a backslider, you're not a preacher. Yeah, but you see, the way things are in the land and the way things are in the church, everywhere, it's like, you know, everybody, apostle, everybody, prophet, everybody, evangelist, going to do the work of the ministry. You cannot do the work of the ministry in that condition because the work of the ministry is perfecting the seeds for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, if your language cannot edify one person, your wife, if your language cannot edify one person, your husband. If your language, if the speech of your mouth cannot edify the little circle in your family around you, how can you edify the body of Christ? We need to take all that into consideration that if you are going to be an edifier, a person that edifies, edifies the body of Christ, the edification charity begins at home. We have to look around. Am I edifying the people who are closest to me? Am I edifying the people? Am I charging them? Am I lifting them up? Am I empowering them? Am I encouraging them? The ministry is to edify the body of Christ. In verse 13, verse 13 says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. That's the faith that believes in God and that relies on God, that depends on God for everything. And if the preacher, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the prophet, the apostle cannot even believe in God. He cannot trust in God for every need of his life is always depending on this and depending on that and if he even goes to the dark world to depend upon those people that they don't claim to be Christians they say they are all worshippers and a pastor and a preacher will go to them and the fed man there uh, doing something on the ground and giving you something to eat and giving you something to drink. He says, what do you want? You see, I'm a pastor before an idol worshiper. And I want my church to grow and do something for me. That man is not called of God. If you accept what I say, say amen. <laughs> he wants some juju, some voodoo, some things done so that his church will grow. And he give him something. And he buries something there. It's not depending on the Father, on the Son, on the Holy Ghost. If he dies in that condition, the Bible says he will not get to heaven. He'll go to hell. Because he did not depend on the power of the Lord. Give me power. I want to work miracles. The power comes from Christ. Comes from the Holy Spirit. If you want to be an evangelist, a dynamic evangelist, and you want to see souls saved, you want to see the sick healed, the secret is not in the hand of the idol worshiper that people go to and they want something. Whatever you get there, no matter how many people are healed by that kind of power on the last day, Jesus said, they would say, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we, done, have we not done many wonderful works in your name? But I will say unto them, depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity, I never knew you. If we're going to serve the Lord, we'll come out straight, we'll come out open, and then we'll follow the pattern. Peter did not go to any kind of backyard power. 
a power giver to be able to raise all that he raised and do all the miracles that he did. Paul the apostle did not go to any backyard power to do anything or everything he did. If you are like that, you have to do like they did in the Acts of the Apostles. You have to confess, you have to believe, and you have to burn all those things you had in the past because our God is enough. And Jesus is sufficient. And it says that all of us, the members, the ministers, were edifying them, were preaching to them, were enlightening them, were encouraging them until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children that the people we minister to, that our, that our, our members we minister to, and the people we evangelize, that they will not remain babes or children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the sledge of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15, in verse 15, but speaking, speaking the truth, speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things. The purpose of the ministry, the essential of the ministry, is that we so teach and we so preach that the people who listen to us will grow up. They will not be toddlers and children and infants, ignorant of the doctrines of the Bible and ignorant of the possibilities in Christ all their life. They grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. We're looking at three points in the message this morning. And we're looking at number one, the perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men. He is a model. He is a pattern. He is our goal. He is the one we're looking at. He did it and we can do it too. The perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men. Number two, the promised prophet with essential message and mandate. Christ had been prophesied that he will come and he came to do what had been told of him that he will come to do and in due time at the appropriate time he came and he came with essential message he never said anything redundant anything unnecessary anything that we don't need to hear he had no knowledge Knowledge of heaven, knowledge of angels, knowledge of men, knowledge of the earth, knowledge of history, knowledge of the present, and knowledge of prophecy. But he didn't give all that knowledge. He gave us the essential message, and he gave us the essential mandate. Number three, the precious promises for every member and minister. We we'll come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men. The perfect priest. We're talking about Christ. In Hebrews chapter 5, reading from verse 4, no man take a day's honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. Look at verse 5. It says, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. He didn't just jump into that. Father, what should I do? Go be the high priest. And because of that, but he that said unto him, thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee. We're looking at chapter 5, chapter uh, but this same chapter 5, verse 9. Look at verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey 
him. Please underline the words, obey him. I've been traveling around, and I find there are people who think they are saved when they're living in disobedience. I found people who think they're born again, and they're living in a diametrical opposite thing to what Christ has said. They live in all kinds of sins, all kinds of evil, and they do all kinds of, you know, gymnastics, and they still claim to be members of the body of Christ, and they claim to be ministers in the kingdom of God. Understand, he, because of what he suffered, he provided, he's become the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, called of God and high priest, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We divide this to three parts. Look at number one. Number one is the excellent ministry of our high priest. Number two is the exalted minister in the heavenly places. And number three is our expected ministry as the holy priesthood. Look at number one. Number one, the excellent ministry of our high priest, our high priest. What's his ministry? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, so also Christ, chapter 7, reading from verse 25, it says, uh, wherefore he, Christ, he, the Savior, he, our Lord, he, the high priest, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. We don't come unto God by an angel. We don't come unto God by the founder of our denomination. We don't come unto God on the basis of our title. This is who I am. And then I come to the presence of God and say, God, I'm talking to you. And they don't mention Jesus. They don't go through Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the only door by which we can get to the Father, by which we can get to heaven. He tells us wherefore he, our Christ, our Savior, our Lord, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seen make intercession for them. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, for such an high priest Christ became us who is holy, that's Christ, harmless, that's Christ, harmless, that's Christ, you know, in some of the churches and assemblies and fellowships, we uh, fear some people. And it's because of what they say. They say here, if you don't do everything I say, and you are quoting Bible to me, you are quoting Bible to me, you look like you've gone to deeper life. Bible, Bible. If you don't do what I tell you to do, and I place a curse on you, nobody in your country, nobody in any country can get you from there. Now, Christ is not like that. Those who hurt other people, harm other people, curse other people, injure other people, and they pursue them with a kind of power that will destroy their lives, that's not Christ. Look at Christ. Because he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. That's our Savior. I will be like him. You be like him in Jesus' name. Look at number two there. Number two there is the exalted minister in the heavenly 
places exalted look at hebrews chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 1 hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 now of the things which we have spoken this is the sum this is the summary and this is the logical conclusion we have such an high priest and he set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the lord pitched and not man he tells us in verse 6 it says but now as he obtained a more excellent ministry a more excellent ministry now if you are going to follow up type pattern and you pick moses excellent not the more excellent ministry aaron excellent not the more excellent david excellent not the most excellent not the more excellent but he cries above angels above men above religious people of any generation any dispensation now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is not that he was not that he will be in the future in the millennium even to this present time he is the mediator of a better covenant there are many covenants in the in the bible abrahamic covenant this one is a better covenant noahic covenant this one is a better co mosaic covenant this one is a better co davidic covenant this one is a better covenant a covenant with the children of israel but this one a better covenant he now he has obtained a more excellent ministry and is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises we're looking at, uh, at ephesians chapter 1 looking at verse 3 ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ look at that we come by conversion by salvation by regeneration by the renewal of our very nature and it lifts us up in heavenly places spiritually heavenly places as we remain and abide in the heavenly places in christ then all the spiritual blessings come but if we degrade ourselves and we go to earthly places earthly dungeons earthly valleys earthly powers then you stop the flow of the spiritual blessings in your life but he our god through christ he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ abide there stay with him there united with christ look at chapter 2 of ephesians ephesians chapter 2 i'm looking at verse 6 he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus if your seat is absent and you are not sitting together with christ learning of christ beholding the beauty and the glory of christ satisfied in the presence of christ you see it is vacant where is it where is he it's going to some backyard power giver it's not there then you're not going to have the ministry he calls us to have but you remain you abide you are seated in heavenly places in christ you don't debate to tradition you don't debate to idolatry you don't debate to any other thing not even psychology not the philosophy of men you abide and remain there and you see together with him in heavenly places 
untold, unnumbered blessings will be yours even this morning in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three. Number three is the expected ministry. As the holy priesthood, expected ministry. I was appointed a teacher in school to teach them a particular subject. And they, were, they put me in the class preparing for the WAEC exam. And they had an expectation of me. Another teacher had been there before, but now they said they wanted me. Now, it's not just praise the Lord, I'm a teacher. Praise the Lord, I'm teaching the final classes. They had expectation. You're a medical doctor, and they give you a license to practice. And it's not just, I'm a doctor, I have license to practice. The Medical National Association, they have an expectation. And the, and the patients that come, the people that are brought there for you to handle, they have expectation. Heaven has expectation. He put us in the ministry. Whatever the title and whatever the position, there is the expected ministry at the holy priesthood. And to start with our name, our title, and our description as the holy priesthood. Look at First Peter chapter 2, and I read from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, dignified, royal, kingly, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Look at that. Look at the description of the people. And we who are called into the ministry, and we who are members of the body of Christ, there is an expectation, and it's in that, in that verse, chosen generation. There are people who are not chosen. Why? Because they have not responded to the call, call to repentance, call to righteousness, and call to regeneration. Because they have not responded, they are not chosen. It says many are called, but few are chosen. Now we're part of that chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a priesthood that is dignified and uh, honored royal priesthood that is kingly and the behavior, the action, the disposition and the appearance anywhere they can tell is different. When you see a doctor, he dresses like a doctor. He is different. She is different. And when you see a four man, they are constructing the road. As you go, nobody needs to point and say that the four man, what the appearance and what the control and what the standing firm, you can tell that the four man, that's the engineer there, that's the construction person. You can see him there as he talks. It's, not, it's looking at the pattern. It's looking at the drawing. And he's doing everything. Everything you can tell and ministers, people should be able to tell in your comportment, in your conduct, in your life, in your character. They should be able to tell royal priesthood and holy nation. You know, somebody is preaching and he said, hey, let, look at me and listen to me. I don't believe in holiness. You are not part of that holy nation. If you are part of that holy nation, you'll not be contradicting your call. You'll not be contradicting the call of Christ upon yourself. It says you're supposed to be a holy nation and you come to tell the public and you come to tell the world that you're not holy and that you don't believe in holiness. You know why they say that? Because, uh, you know, there are some ladies in the congregation there and they've been messing up together and they want to declare openly, lady, don't judge me, I'm still a preacher, I'm still a pastor, I'm still a leader. I don't believe in holiness. If you don't quit in that condition, you'll be kind of expelled on the final day. It's called us to be a holy nation, a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you 
out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I pray that this expectation will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28. We're looking at verse 18. It says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. Christ, the Father honored him. Christ, the Father exalted him. Christ, the Father positioned him to be higher than the highest in the whole universe because now he has given him all power, all authority in heaven and in earth. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, Go ye therefore. Therefore, because you are with me, I'm with you. And because all power is given unto me, and because no power on earth can bring you down as you stay in the place I put you. Go ye therefore and teach how many nations? All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, teaching them to observe all things, remember, in all nations, to every creature, everyone will preach you, everyone will evangelize, everyone will teach, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Do you know there are preachers who change the message from city to city? Ah, you can preach that in Lagos, but not in many city. Nothing like that. You can preach that in Nigeria, but not in Sierra Leone. Nothing like that. You can preach that in Africa, but not in America. Nothing like that. Teaching them, all the nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And if you do that, and lo, I am with you, how often? Always. Always. You know why some people don't preach everything they know the Lord has taught us in the Bible. When they go to those places, this is unfamiliar ground. I've never met these people before. And I don't know the people that hold the power and the authority. I don't know what they will do unto me. They don't believe that the Lord of all power, all authority is with them everywhere they go. Anywhere they go, they are searching. Who are the people, the decision makers here? Who are the people, the power holders here? Who are the people, the king makers here? That if I know them, then I will have freedom. Once they give me the liberty and the license, the liberty and the license that Christ has given them is not enough. He has given us liberty. He has given us license. And he says, with that liberty and with that license, is the one that called us. Is the one that is going to judge our ministry on the final day. We don't have to be main pleasers. You know, bow here, bow there until our back is bent and we cannot lift up our backs anymore because Christ is with us and he is for us and he has commanded us and this is what he expects and this is what he will judge on the final day teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world and everybody shout Amen. We're coming to point uh, number two now. Number two, the promised prophet with essential message and mandate. The 
the promised prophet, that's Christ. He was promised. And then we're told he has the essential message and the essential mandate. We'll divide this to three parts. Number one, the prophecy and the decree concerning Christ. Number two, the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Number three, the preaching of the declarations of Christ. Let's look at number one. Number one, the prophecy and decree concerning Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, reading from verse 18, it says, And I will raise them up a prophet, capital P, from among their brethren, like unto thee, Moses, and will put my words in his mouth. God said, I will put my words in his mouth. Moses, you're like the primary school teacher. And you're beginning the spiritual education of the children of Israel. And everything I've told you, everything I put in your mouth and you declare is at this preliminary level. Now, the higher one, the greater one, the holier one, the the heavenly one is coming. And when he comes, I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. He's talking about Christ. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which I shall speak, in my name, I will require each of him. How do we know that he's talking about Christ? Look at Acts chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 22. And for Moses truly said unto the fathers, the prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like Unto me, unto me, Moses, him shall ye hear in all things. He'll talk about repentance here. He'll talk about restitution here. He'll talk about being born again, regeneration, hear him. He'll talk about righteous life, except righteousness be a greater than the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. He'll talk about purity of heart. He'll talk about sanctification. Hear ye him. He'll talk about marriage, one man, one wife, until death do us part. I'll put my word in his mouth. Hear him. He'll talk of the harvest. He'll talk of evangelism. Hear ye him. He'll talk about healing. And he will pronounce the healing upon the people. Hear ye him. He'll talk about deliverance. He shall cast out devil. Hear ye him. The totality of everything that he brought. He'll talk about his coming again. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me, ye believe in God also. He says in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming. All that he said, we're not speaking and choosing. A prophet shall the Lord your God resolve unto you. Of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it tells us unto you, first God, having raised up his son, Jesus, he now identified that prophet to come. Having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you. In turning away every one of you from his iniquity. Uh, we're looking at uh, number two here. Number two, we're looking at the principles of the doctrines of Christ. He has called us. And he says, I am going, but I put you in place as my ambassadors. And what I should have been preaching, go 
preach, what I should have been doing, go do. What I should have been emphasizing, if I were here on the earth, go and emphasize that anywhere, everywhere you go. And it's giving us the principles of the doctrine of Christ. It says in chapter 6 of Hebrews, reading from verse 1, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, <laughs> what does that mean? Don't preach that again. Don't say that again. It says, like a builder, we've laid the foundation. Now, leaving the, um, leaving the foundation, let's build the walls. Let's put all the structures and let's go to the roof. We cannot be on the foundation every time. We're building a sanctuary. We're building a house. We build the walls and we build the roof. We build everything in uh, living the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on uh, unto perfection. Unto perfection. That's, that's what the word says. Not laying again uh, the foundation. Now what are the principles of the doctrine of Christ? Number one, repentance from dead works. What are dead works? The works of a dead man, dead in sins and trespasses, is not born again yet, is not come to life in Christ, and is dead. All the works he does, he might, you know, give money, he might even preach, he might even pray, he might go to, you know, whatever area and say, hey, I'm delivering people. All the activities, all the actions, all the works, all the efforts of a dead man, they are dead works. And he says, we should repent from that. That is the foundation of the doctrine of Christ. And then he says, he, he tells us, and of faith towards God. That's at the foundation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Only believe, fear not, only believe. And that daughter, that son, that person will be healed. The faith is the foundation. Look at verse 2. It tells us in verse 2, it says, and of the doctrine of baptisms, plural, water baptism, and then Holy Ghost baptism, and baptism in persecution and suffering, or baptism, because he wants you to bear your cross and follow him. He wants you to deny yourself and follow him. And whatever the suffering, whatever the persecution, he says, you are baptized in that baptism that I am baptized with the doctrine of water baptism, spirit baptism, and baptism in persecution. And then he says, of laying on of hands. That's not the climax of ministry. That's not the peak of ministry. It's the regular foundation of the doctrine of Christ. And of the resurrection of the dead. That Christ will come. And the dead will be raised incorruptible. And that also there will be the rapture. That when he comes, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be made alive. In a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, as if you are blinking your eye, the trumpet will sound. And then the dead will Christ, and we who remain alive shall be caught up together with them. The rapture, the resurrection is part of the doctrine of Christ and, the, and of eternal judgment. There will be the white gray throne judgment. Some will go to the lake of fire. Those who are not born again, although they are claiming to be born again, those whose lives do not reflect the new birth, the salvation, the regeneration, the change of life, all those people whose names are not found, reaching, kept in the book of life, they go to the lake of fire, but the people who are born again, the people who are living the righteous life, the people who are pure in heart, for they shall see God, then they'll go finally to heaven and, we, and be with him forever and ever and ever. Yeah. You'll be there in Jesus' name. It's not talk of mouth, repentance. It's not talk of mouth, restitution. You know what? When I became a Christian, and I heard 
about restitution, there was one thought that always was in my heart. I don't want to do anything that I have to make restitution for, and then I'll find it difficult to make the restitution. You know, challenges will come, trials will come, and situations will come that will make me, the pastor is not here, and my, the members of the church, my friends are not here. I could have done this, but if I do that, eventually, I have to make restitution, and I don't want that. I don't want to make, you know, this journey because of the shame it will bring, and therefore, I restrain myself in the spirit of God and by the grace of God that whatever I will not be willing or able to make restitution for, I will not do. You know, when you live by the principle of the doctrine of Christ, it keeps you straight. It keeps you firm. And it makes your life upright. Your life will be upright. Yeah. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, According to the grace of